I'm going to suggest to you to be more vulnerable. And, and I want to tell, tell you something. I thought I knew what changed my life. And for those that may not know, I, I will share it with you. I know that some of you may have seen me talk about the story about my dad, and, and, um, and some have not, so I, so I want to share that story. So I didn't have the greatest childhood, and from three-ish, four-ish to 12, I was in a pretty rough scenario. And at the age of 12, I had the opportunity to choose whether I was going to stay with my dad and stepmom or go live with my mom. And so I chose to live with my mom. And, and I didn't talk to my dad. I didn't see him, didn't talk to him. And there was a period of 13 years where I didn't talk to him. He didn't meet his grandsons. My sons at the time were uh, nine and 10 years old, I believe. He had never met him. He never talked. I went to an event, and it was, it was a three-day event. I went to that event, and I went there at a time when I had lost everything in real estate. I was dead broke. I was in foreclosure. I was very depressed. I was drinking heavily all the time. And I went there hoping maybe I can find a way to make money because I thought I was broken. I thought that I'd lost something. I'd lost my drive. I'd lost my motivation. I'd lost, I don't know, I don't know what else, but I, something had changed. And, and I went there feeling very, very low. And I go there, like maybe, maybe I can learn some strategies to make some money because I'm broke as a joke. And um, I went there, and the number one thing I came away with was I had repair relationship with my dad on a to-do list with no priority. Well, what happens with a to-do list with no priority is you lose the opportunity. You, lo you, you lose the chance. People pass away. You aren't able to repair anything because you keep waiting. And so on day two of that event, I reach out to him. First time, hadn't talked to him in 13 years. Reach out to him and uh, we had a conversation. And what, an important part of this that I, I really hope you get because over the years I've had a lot of people that have taken action you know, from this story and, I'm, you know, I'm, and I'm, I'll share some of that. But I was addicted to me doing the reach out I was not addicted to his response. That's very important for you to hear because you may have a relationship that's been hurting you. You may have someone that maybe you could be open to forgiving them, right? Not forgetting what happened, but forgiving them and releasing some of that resentment in your heart, which is what I was doing. And so I reached, I reached out to him. Turns out um, there was an openness there for me to go up and see him. And so you should be seeing a picture. That's, that's uh, my dad the first day he met his grandsons. It's me and my dad. And uh, that was back, that was the first week of July 2009. Now, went there, had a good time, uh, got to you know, spend, spend time with him, which I, you know, I hadn't even talked to him, right? And I come home and the very next week, I join a network marketing company that I go on to become the number one income earner of. That is not coincidence. And I, I really believe that when you release some of that past baggage, some of the past garbage, some of the past fear, resentment, anger, hatred, when you release some of that, new things open up for you. And that's, and that's what happened to me. All of a sudden, I'm presented an opportunity that had I been presented it a week earlier, or two, maybe two weeks earlier, I don't think I would have been open to it. And so that is what I thought changed my life. Now, here's the reality. It did change my life. But I realized there was something even more important. There was something more important. And I only realized this just last week, just last week. We have a, uh, a, a, a group 
where ironically we talk about branding, right? Not this kind of stuff. We talk about branding. And in that branding group with one of my mentors, Hank, I realized that it wasn't that that created the biggest breakthrough for me. It was actually sharing about reconnecting with my dad. So let me tell you the first time I ever shared that story that you, that you just heard. It was 2010. I was successful. I, I was, um, I was, I, I had already reached the number one income earner spot in that network marketing company. And I had someone in my organization say, hey, hey, can you come up to Myrtle Beach and, you know, do some, some trainings for me, for me and my team and, you know, rock this thing out. And, and I'm like, yeah, man, yeah, you're, you know, you're rocking it. Let's, let's do it. And so I go, I go up to Myrtle Beach and I share that exact story that, that, that you just heard about reconnecting with my dad, how it opened up something new in my life. And, and I'll tell you, I'd never shared it. I'd never, I'd never shared it, but something just pulled on my heart, just like share that story. It was weird. It was, it was a, it was a weird phenomenon where I just, I was just getting pulled to share that story. I was being pulled to share something I'd never shared before. And, and, and I just, I just went with it. And I shared that story. Afterwards, the guy who booked me for that training was coming down the stair, was coming down the, the aisle, tears running down his face. And I'm like, wow, you know, like, Man, that was impactful, right, for, you know, for him. And so he, he comes down the aisle, tears running down his face, and he says, I can't believe you just shared that story. I haven't talked to my dad in 17 years, and tomorrow I fly out for his funeral. And my first reaction, and I don't know if, I don't know if you're the same kind of personality type, but my first reaction was, damn, what if I shared earlier? So my first reaction was to beat myself up and to say, what did I do wrong? Well, I was, I was just on a call with him a week before. If only I'd shared, maybe he would have reconnected. My second reaction was, I've got to be more vulnerable. I've got, you know, things that have happened to me in my life that, that, pale in comparison to some other people, and I have some things that have happened in my life that could really help other people. And it has been, it has been that, the sharing of, of that reconnection that's actually changed my life more than, than the actual doing of it. And, and so I've received uh, I, hundreds, hundreds and hundreds of messages of people over the years of people reconnecting with their sister, with their aunt, with their uncle, with their mother, with their father, with their daughter, with their son. And there's a, there's a few I wanted to share with you, and, and here's one. This might be difficult for me to read. Let me see. And so um, this is from a friend of mine wanted to say thank you. I haven't seen my dad in 14 years and finally saw him today and really met him for the first time. I saw him briefly 14 years ago, grew up without him. I didn't realize how much resentment and emptiness I had until I heard you speak on the topic. Thank you for helping me learn how to get through it and be happy. Here's another one. Your presentation moved me deeply. I haven't talked to my brother or father in a year. After you walked off stage, I went outside and reconnected with them both. And here's one. And I, I actually have two stories like this, um, but it's just wild. So... Um, this is Mark out of Weatherford, Texas. Um, I was just thinking back to your Power Mind training, disc number six, about mending failed relationships. I had that with my dad, and he, and he had never met his grandchildren, my two boys. After listening to your training, I reached out to him and drove my boys five hours to meet him. I'm glad I did, because Wednesday he passed away unexpectedly. I'm glad that at least my boys got to meet him and he got to meet them. Thank you for all you do. I'm forever grateful. I want you, this, this, this is the stuff that has kept me going. This is the stuff of, I, I can help people. I can change some lives. 
And it's the exact kind of thing I want you to experience. You've been through some tough stuff. You've overcome trauma, you've overcome obstacles, you've overcome things that, that makes my story you know, pale in comparison. You being willing to be vulnerable and sharing what you've overcome is going to inspire people that I may never reach. I may, I may never get to them. And so I, re, I really wanted to set the tone. I want you to, to understand that, that you're a survivor. You've overcome so much. And there are people out there that are hanging on by a thread, especially this year, with so much fear, so much anger, so much going on in the world. It is so important for you to understand we are the community that's going to help those people. We may be the only community that's going to help those people. It's us. We have to be willing to be vulnerable. We have to be willing to show up on the days that we don't want to. And I hope you do.